So welcome to our session on accurate monitor color. This is the step one to getting great digital color. Making sure your monitor is displaying color, contrast, and tone to the best of its ability is the first and probably the most important step you can take towards getting great prints. Stop and think about it for a minute. If you're judging the color, brightness, and contrast of your images on a monitor that's not displaying these things correctly, how can you possibly make the right decisions when you're editing your images? In this session, we'll take a look at the problem and then see what you need to have to make your monitor to perform to the best of its ability. After we examine the issues, we'll see how easy it is to calibrate your monitor for the best color possible. Now, to make our monitors as accurate as possible, I'm going to use the Color Monkey display from X-Rite. Now, there are other models and devices that create monitor profiles, but I think when you consider what delivers the most bang for the buck, the Color Monkey display is my first choice. As was mentioned in the first video, most monitors come out of the box way too bright and frequently a bit too blue. While this makes games, videos, and web browsing brighter, it's not a good thing for editing photography. When we want to make a print or send one out to the lab, we need to know that the edits we're making are having an effect on the actual image file, not what the monitor was adjusting because its brightness and color was off. When you calibrate and profile your monitor with the Color Monkey display, you can be sure that the display is showing you the most accurate depiction possible of your image file's data. I'll take you through the software and its options so that you can know your monitor is doing the best job it can. Now before we get started, keep one other thing in mind. The quality of your monitor does affect how accurate you can display your images. There's a reason why some monitors are expensive and others are cheap. Investing in a good graphics monitor is a great idea for anyone serious about printing. Expect to pay $700 and more to get into that category, and perhaps even more depending on your needs. By the way, for iMac users, the new 27-inch displays are actually pretty good, but once you calibrate them. That said, every monitor and laptop needs to be calibrated so that it displays color and tone to the best of its ability. And this is something that should be done on a routine basis. It's very simple to do. It's only going to take 10 minutes or so of your time. So we're going to put the Color Monkey display to use and see step by step how to make your monitor show the best color possible. To do that, let's head up into my office where my displays are and we'll do a calibration there. All right, so here we are at my office. I'm ready to start calibrating a display. I'm going to show you how easy it is. I'm using the Color Monkey display. I've got the software launched. I've got a dual monitor system here. I've got an iMac 27 inch and hooked up to it is my ASO 222. One of the things when you start the software process is it's going to ask you which display you want to calibrate. So we're going to work on the ASO for now. And I have two choices, profile my display or profile my projector. We're just going to go ahead and profile the display. And it asks you, well, which display do you want to profile? It sees the two of them. I choose the CG222. Now there's an option here called display match. And what that does is it will try to optimize the display so that if you have another monitor that's your main monitor, it will try to match it. Is this a good option? Depends. For me, I'm going to recommend not doing this because the CG222 is a more capable monitor than this iMac display. It's got a greater range of color. So I'm going to just do it to the best it can because what I typically do is I will do some basic edits on the iMac, but all of my serious stuff takes place on the ASO. So I'm not going to do the display match. Click on Next, and I have two choices here. Well, I can click on Advanced, I can click on Easy, and then a couple other options that are very specific options that if you don't know what they are, you don't need to use them. We're just going to go Easy. I'm going to make it very simple for this time. I'm going to do Easy Photo and click on Next. And then the first thing that software offers for you to do is to measure the ambient lighting. And the way you do that is you click on the measure button and it's going to measure the light that's in the area around your monitor. And based on what it reads, it's going to pick the correct brightness for your display. So I click on next and it tells me, okay, put the color monkey on the display. To do that, I just lift up the top and rotate this around. This is the place that's going to go against the screen. And there's a little icon right on the middle of the screen that says hang the color monkey here. So let me go ahead and just hang this here. 
And there's a little weight, a little counterweight that will make sure it stays in place. You do want to make sure that it is flush up against the screen. Now the ambient room light that you're in when you're doing this measuring really doesn't matter because it's flush up against the screen. So all the light coming into the color monkey itself is coming from the screen. So there it's hanging right in the middle of the screen. Click on next and now it's going to go ahead and do its thing. You see it's starting to send colors up to the screen. It's measuring them as they come in. And what a profile is, is again, a set of corrections for this. So for example, when it hits 100% red, the color monkey is going to look at that in its software. And let's say for example's sake, it's got oh, five points of blue in it. Well, that gets recorded into the profile so that the next time your software says, please give me 100% red on the screen, it looks at the profile and the profile says, well, you need to take out five points of blue to actually get 100% red on the screen. And it just does that for all these colors and combinations. It's really a fairly basic process. Yes, a lot's going on behind the scenes, but really it's just a set of corrections so that when your software says, give me a specific color, it knows what corrections to make to make sure that happens on the screen. Now this takes about five minutes or so, so we're not going to sit here and watch this happen. Let's zoom ahead to the end and then we'll see what other options we have. All right, so I uh, went and got myself a cup of coffee while the process was finishing. It's all done now. It's come up and it's given it a default name. I can actually remove the color monkey from the screen at this point. I'm going to rotate the diffuser around and just let this sit here in front of the display and it gives me a default name and it says it's CG222 easy and it gives this long number. Well, actually it's the date. So that's handy. I'll just leave that. So I'm going to click on save and it will generate and apply the profile. You don't have to do anything. It's automatically going to save it and implement it. And this is something you should do Oh, once a month or so, uh, depending on the quality of your monitor, the ASO is stable for a long time, but at, at least every three months you should do this. The iMac I probably do every other, every other month or maybe even once a month. So the profile saved and it does give you an option where you can click on a button that says, remind me to reprofile every one, two, three or four weeks. Um, I don't like the reminders. I have enough stuff popping up on my desktop. But you do need to get this into your workflow. And I generally do it on a Monday, uh, maybe once a month, really. I do it a little more than maybe even need to with the current crop of monitors. But it never hurts to have an accurate and current monitor profile. So I'm not going to turn on the reminder. I'm going to turn that off. Click on Next. And then you're presented with a handful of images that are in the software where you can see the before and after. And you'll see that your image, your monitor is going to look different than it did before, but now it is more accurate. As I mentioned, monitors mostly are a little bit overly saturated. And when you send that to print, if you see this oversaturated image that you think looks good, it's not the image that's overly saturated, it's the monitor. And when you go out to print, it's going to be dull. So you want to see an accurate depiction on your screen so that you can make the saturation and color changes to get the print that you're after. And that's the whole process. I just click on next. Uh, there is an option to do ambient light monitoring. If you're in a situation or an environment where the light changes frequently, you can leave the color monkey display plugged in and it will check ambient light. And you can tell it every five minutes, every up to 60 minutes. And if it sees a change beyond a certain amount, it will automatically adjust the brightness of your monitor for you. Again, this system is great because if you don't want to be bothered about thinking about it, you just say, please calibrate my monitor, go get yourself a cup of coffee or whatever, and let it do its thing. And it's really that automatic. So that's how easy it is. I've got a calibrated monitor. And as long as I'm at it, I may as well do the same thing for my iMac. So that's how easy it is to get your monitor in the best shape it can be so that it is accurately showing you color and tone and saturation to the best of its ability. And that's an important first step that everybody should take to make sure you're going to get great color in your prints or wherever they're shown. I hope I made it clear how important and how easy it is to have a calibrated monitor. The only way you can truly make accurate edits of your images is knowing that the image you see on the screen is correctly showing you the luminance and colors in your image file. Once this happens, you've made the first and probably most important step towards getting great prints. For more information on the X-Rite Color Monkey Display, visit xrightphoto.com. Here's a link for you. The next step is creating and using custom camera color profiles for the most accurate color conversion for your RAW files. 
If you've never seen the Color Checker Passport in action, you'll quickly come to appreciate how much time it will save you when starting your color edits. I'll see you there. Thank you.